you clicked on this video because you want to learn English phrasal verbs with Toy Story. I want to teach you English phrasal verbs with Toy Story. So let's get right to it. All right, everyone. This is a stick up. Don't anybody move. Oh, dear. We are going to start off with a tough one here. Mr. Potato Head, one of my favorite characters, just said this is a stick up. Stick up. Very common English phrasal verb and also a very difficult English phrasal verb. What they are literally doing is sticking their hands up in the air, which is common when someone is robbing you. They want to see your hands to make sure you don't have any weapons. Another way you can use stick up is to literally stick something up on the wall. I'm going to stick up this piece of paper. A student made that for me, I promise. All right, I, I can't lie, I made it myself. People say I am the best boss. I think that pretty much sums it up. You can also stick up for someone. If someone is being treated badly and you don't feel like that is right, you can come to their defense. You can help them, you can aid them. If you do that, you are sticking up for them. Let's take a little old lady at a grocery store. Maybe someone is telling her to hurry up. You are taking too long in line. You don't like that. So you tell the mean person, hey, leave her alone. Don't do that. That's not nice. You would be sticking up for that little old lady. I'm back at home now. Do you see that Andy's wanted poster? says 50 bazillion dollar reward. Yeah, that's not a real number, but it is a bit of slang. When we want to say a really big number, we might say bazillion. We have million, we have billion, we have trillion, but not bazillion. Do you wanna hear something crazy? One million seconds is about 11 and a half days. One billion seconds, is over 31 years. And one trillion seconds is almost 32,000 years. Mm, money, money, money. Oh, oh, you made no potato. Quiet, boat people, or your sheep get run over. Oh my gosh, Mr. Potato Head is so mean. He says, Bo Peep's sheep will get run over. Literally, run over. So I don't know, is it a car? Is it a train? but it will go over the sheep and probably kill them, run over them. But we can use that phrasal verb in a couple different ways. Let's say you're baking chocolate chip cookies. You went to the store and you got all the ingredients, except you forgot chocolate chips. You need to go back to the store to get your chocolate chips. You could say, oh, I forgot my chocolate chips. I need to run over to the store. When you say run over, that means you're going for a short time. You won't be there for long. You might hear some people say, I need to skip over to the store. That's another way to say you need to go, but you'll be right back. You're not staying for very long. One other way we use run over is when someone gets taken advantage of. What I mean by that is, let's say there's a dad and he's run over by his children. The dad might say, no, you can't have those chocolate chip cookies and the kids don't listen. They take the cookies anyway. Those kids are running over their dad. They're not listening to him. They are taking advantage of him. As you can see, I'm wearing a different shirt, but it's a different day and I wore this ugly shirt to teach in, but now I'm home so we can continue the lesson. Now might be a good time to remind you to subscribe if you haven't yet and like the video if you're learning something. Pull my string, the birthday party's today. Okay, everybody, coast is clear. Did you hear Woody? He, he said, the coast is clear. We often say this when there was a danger and that danger is no longer around. The coast is clear. Maybe you're crossing the street with a friend and there are a lot of cars, but then the cars die down. Use a little phrasal verb there, meaning not as bad as before. The cars have died down. When you can cross, you can say the coast is clear. 
Your work day is over. It's raining really hard out. You want to get to your car, but you don't want to get wet. Maybe you are going to wait until the rain dies down. Then the coast will be clear and you can make a break for it. We sometimes say make a break for it when you don't have a lot of time before the coast is no longer clear. When you're crossing the street with your friend, if you think the cars are going to come back and you don't have a lot of time, you can say, all right, the coast is clear. Let's make a break for it. Hey, man, look, I'm Picasso. I don't get it. You want cultured swine? Ham just said, I don't get it. That is a very popular way to say, I don't understand in English. As a teacher, I hear this all the time. If I explain something, but maybe it's not very clear, my students might say, I don't get it. And then I will have to re-explain. Hey, yes. Draw. Oh! again at you've been working on that draw that was really bad woody just said a really bad dad joke he used a pun draw can be used two different ways one where you're like drawing a revolver from your holster the other is just draw you can draw with a pencil or a pen and that's what etch a sketch did he drew a picture of a revolver while woody drew his revolver from his holster. And this really is an ugly shirt. I've had it for about 20 years. Maybe I need to think about getting rid of it. Remember, I'm just a couple of blocks away. Two bad dad jokes in a row. Bo Peep just said, I'm only a couple blocks away. Bo Peep is walking next to three blocks. Little kids will often build things out of blocks, but she could only be a couple city blocks away. And a typical city block is about 260 feet. I expected better jokes from Bo Peep. If you enjoyed this lesson where we look at TV shows and movies, I got a playlist right there full of them. See you next time.